Uh, Patricia chimed in. She did give us some comps, Mike. It's in uh, it's in Yucca. She's been seeing comps at thirty five hundred to five thousand. Yeah, I was 000. texting her. Uh, I was I was just doing some texting on Facebook. I was feeling uh, a little uh, like getting involved. Yeah, I was just kind of multitasking. Um, I think that um, she, she might want to hold off on buying that based on her comps. You know, I did a quick search of a one point one seven acre in, in Yucca, Arizona, and that sounds like more like retail what she's listing that for. Wait, let me look again what she said the purchase price was. Uh, do you have it again? Where to go, Bossman? I don't want to. Uh, purchase price was twenty seven hundred. So yeah, that sounds high. Yeah, that sounds re more like retail, Patricia. Um, if you haven't um, purchased that yet. I would probably hold off. Now that brings to light a, it brings to light another topic, right? Sometimes we send offers in the mail, and maybe we're a little off on our numbers. Uh, and this well, comes to light in a lot of different ways. Uh, we see different sales going on. We see a different activity going on. Maybe after we mailed. And then, you know, we get an accepted offer. We take a look at the property. Oh, it's got this small wash going through it. Oh, the road access isn't the best. Oh, there's some change in elevation. Uh, Mike Zeno, what do we do? Yeah, we, we, we definitely renegotiate. And I, I would like to know if she's had any contact. Patricia, have you talked to this person yet? What sort of communication have you had? Because we could definitely talk about some negotiation tactics based upon what's been communicated between the two of you so far. So, Mike, I am the seller. I sent you an off. I I signed a purchase agreement for twenty. You sent me an offer for twenty seven hundred dollars. I signed it and sent it to you. Yeah, it's this property. You get it in Ooh. the mail. You do your yeah. due diligence. What do you do? You call me up, and what happens? <clears throat> well, I call you up, and I'm gonna be like Scott. Uh, thanks so much for sending that back to us because uh, you know really good communication. But you know, I would be very honest with you, like Scott. You know. When I started mailing this area, because we do mail, we, we look for uh, lots of properties in the area when we target a specific location. I was uh, under the impression that comps were whatever, right? And, you know, I've been doing a deeper dive, and I'm actually, actually, I was wrong, you know, and I actually overpriced my mailers. Now, I don't know how attached you are to your property, Scott, and I'd love to get you as close to that 27 as possible, but uh, that's what I would do. I would. Pause keep going, keep going. No, that's the pause because yeah, that's right where the guy goes. Oh. Okay, no problem. Because what's going to happen at that very moment is that Scott's either going to say, "You sent me an offer for twenty-seven, or he's going to say, "I, Mike, uh, this property, I, 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 I've never been to it. I don't want it. I'm tired of paying taxes on it. I just want to get rid of it. Great, okay. because we've been picking these things up for about twelve hundred dollars. I just wanted to be honest with you. Or I might even come out with that. Listen." I've, I've since I've uh, got to know the area better. We've been buying these properties for about twelve hundred dollars. Now I don't want to be offensive to you because I know what we mailed you, but I just want to be truthful that that's what we've been buying them for. And then you pause, and you can always come back if they get over. But you got to have that pregnant pause, right, where you just let them erupt or say, "I just want to get rid of it." Well, Mike, uh, Mike, okay, but l l you just sent me an offer for twenty seven hundred. I signed the purchase agreement. Um. Uh. What's what's I, I don't understand. Like, help me get the deal done here. Right. Right. I know well, the real the reality is that we overpriced our mailers, and that happens from time to time. Uh, you know, when we go into new areas. So I apologize that you know that I sent you an offer of that regard. But I can tell you that if you do decide to work with us, it's quick cash. And we'd, and we'd love to, you know, we'd love to help you out with this. I mean, Scott, do you visit the property? I, I, I was out there like 25, 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that wash running through it? You ever been there during the, uh, <laughs> the rainy season? <laughs> the wash? What wash? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you devalue the property with the with the uh, with the seller, right? But listen, there's nothing you can do to force their hand, right? All you can do is right. point out obvious things and try to elicit a response from them. If someone wants to sell, they're going to work with you. They're going to be very easy to work with. Someone who doesn't want to sell, well, they're just not going to move their numbers, right? So it's a way of uncovering it. So I, I think a, a simple way to uncover that is just to sort of be honest with them, let them know that you overpriced it, 
Let them know that if they were interested, you'd love to work with them, and it's a quick cash transaction. There's no you're going to get the full amount. But we honestly have been buying these things, uh, you know, based upon our current reassessment for about a name your dollar amount, and wait for them to react to it. If it's going to work, it's going to work. Yeah, you got to wait. That that silence is absolutely golden. And one thing I love to point out. Okay, so you went there 25 years. So you've been paying taxes on this for 25 years. Wow. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm faithful with my taxes. I take pride in paying my taxes. I'm not going to be a loser who doesn't pay my taxes. <laughs> That's awesome. I love guys like you. Honestly, I pay my taxes too. You'd be amazed how many people I talk to that don't. So I love the fact that you're. I love that it's up to date. That's outstanding. Look, and the reality is when you have, you when you when. You know, we, we mail consistently, right? So there's never going to be this instance where we think this is the deal we have to have. And when you'll have confidence to sort of let deals go because they're asking uh, more than you want to pay because you have, you know, a number of other deals in the pipeline because you do consistently mail. And so you have deals coming in every day or every week. And if you don't consistently mail, then you might buy that for too much money. Well, there, that's exactly right. You probably don't have the swagger to go, it's 1200 bucks. That's what I, that's it. Like it is, you know, no hard feelings if, if you don't want to sell it. But somebody who buys a lot of deals, they're going to come to a point where they're like, that's it. We have to that's believe it I too, right? You. you have to believe it. It's like I buy properties in certain areas for $100 a piece continually over and over again. But that's my in my mind, that's the going rate, and I fully believe it. When I people run, listen, yeah, just let you know, we usually pick these up for about $100 a piece. If that's okay with you, then we'll get this taken care of you real quick. And uh, like all of them say yes. Right. Nice. Good, good advice, fellas. Thank you. We've they got a lot of watches. The for, they don't sign the thing and send it back to you if they don't want to sell. Yeah. They don't, that's not what you get back right. in the mail. You get something else back in the mail. When they well, you're looking for something. it's completely true. You're looking to uncover. Remember, all we're looking to do is have a conversation with a motivated seller. That's it. Yep. And this is our introduction. This is a hello, my name is Mike Zano and I buy land. Would you like to sell yours? Yes, I would. Great. Let's talk. This is just yep. an introduction that we're getting with this letter. Awesome. It's a conversation starter. Starter. Um starter. Starter. Dino Dano. Uh Property under option agreement, buyer called asking for the APN number to verify the property from the county. Buyer. Okay, what is the best answer to that buyer? Do you guys they normally have it give under the option. APN number? Sure. Is that what it is? It's under an option? They're trying to sell it to somebody? Yes. Yeah. And the, and the, and the end buyer is saying, okay, what's the APN you number? you got to be so transparent. you yeah. got to be transparent with them. Yep. you got to let them know that, like, look at I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to close on this. I was pre-marketing it. If you'd love to work with me, uh, you know, we can take care did of it. You, did you just say fixing? I'm yeah. fixing to close on this? That's awesome. I might I might should come over there and smack you upside the head for saying fixing to. That's not like a Scrabble fixing. word? That won't work in Scrabble, fixing? <laughs> F-I-X-I-N apostrophe? Fixing? No, it's just it's usually an Alabama uh, lingo thing, Mike. I'm just surprised you're branching out. Alabama recently. You're you're branching out, dude. I, I like it. Um, <laughs> Patricia says she might hold off based on the comps you were stating. I yes, you may hold off, but you may have another conversation with the potential seller. You may not be comfortable having you may not be comfortable having that conversation well, you with, tell with the seller too, the first right? time. I'm sorry, I need to hold off on this. I just realized that there's properties yes. out there selling retail for not much some of them a little bit less than what you're asking. I could go to buy this retail from somebody else. So honestly, I can't do it right now. I'd love to help you out, but I'm sorry. Like let them know you're letting the deal go and say and then say if you're ever looking to sell it, you know, honestly it's a for me, it's a thousand dollar purchase. I don't want to make you. I'm not trying to assume that you want to sell for that much. But anyway, right now I got to let that go. If you change your mind, please and like act like you have no interest in it. That might turn them too. You got to remember awesome. that he's. They've had this property probably for a long time, and they and it's a drag, and they want to sell it or they wouldn't have returned the mailer. Like there's a lot of things going on in your favor. But eventually, at some point, if you're going to be in this business for real, not a hobby, 
You're going to have to have that conversation with the seller. And it is generally scary the first time you do it, right up until you do it. And then you go buy it at the price that you want. And they, at the end, here's what they do to you. They say, thank you. Thank you for buying this property. This has been a drag. My idiot father bought this 40 years ago and I inherited it and I couldn't do anything with it. And I do pay the taxes and they're not, the taxes aren't much, but I hate it. And thank you for, for taking care of this. And then it all of a sudden clicks inside you and you're like, okay, I'm actually helping them. Yeah. And if they don't want to sell it, that's cool too. Either yeah. way, it's fine. You're just going to get your version of conveying the truth. Whatever way that you would say that, that feels natural and honest and transparent, do it. it it's got to be pretty truthful to say, here's the story. I'm a land investor. I messed up. I, I overpriced this. I really did. I'm buying them for twelve fifty all day, every day, all over the place. I just bought X. I bought three more. I just can't pay this. I, I don't I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time, but I, I just can't pay that. That's actually the retail price. Here's what I do. I find vacant land that people don't want anymore. They don't want to pay the taxes. They don't want to have a land with a wash. That's not what they're looking to do. They inherited it, whatever. And I give them cash in 10 days. I don't pay retail. You could get more money if you sell it on your own. I'll tell you, selling selling land's the hard part. And I could offer you twelve fifty for this. If you're interested, I'd love to buy it from you. If you're not, I get it. And um, you know, have a great day. Here we go. And more often than not, they'll say, "Okay." 